with these reptilian ETs? God, Adam and Eve, uh, the stories of, of creation and the flood in the Old Testament, they would probably have come from uh, these older stories, these older mythologies, this, the legends and mythologies that have been built up over the years. They're, they're always very, very dangerous or evil. Right. I mean, why is that? According to this one woman who gave me this story earlier, though, it was a sexual story. It's one that said he was kind of breaking ranks and saying, you know, I'm coming to you and I'm, I'm, I'm uh, communing with you and being intimate with you, even though my race is bent on the destruction of mankind. And uh, I would think that if there was a race that was powerful enough to get here, to genetically create mankind out of uh, ancient hominids, why would they wait so long to dominate us? Or are they, the big question is, are they dominating us now? They're even behind the Illuminati. Yeah. And then, of yeah. course, that's, that's the, it's, it's predicated on the fact that you, that you believe whether, whether or not there's an, an Illuminati. And why they're always evil, the story goes, they, seem to be they are here wanting to subjugate us. Maybe even you or I or, or anybody else out there were really reptilians. It's a story of a divided human seed, if you will, that starts with Nakosh having sex with Eve, Eve bringing that to Adam, and then, then he has sex with Eve. She bequeaths twins, one the son of Nakosh, the serpent character, and the other one the son of Adam. And that's your Cain and Abel. And, and the things that happen afterward are what bear this story out. And I think this plays into all the mythology that started as far back as the Sumerian uh, civilization, back in the Fertile Crescent. And uh, that it was about 2,000 years before the writing of the book of Genesis. But they wrote about these things with their gods. And the Anunnaki being the pantheon of the ancient Sumerians. And this is where this all begins. And the stories between... The Anunnaki accounts of creation, the Anunnaki accounts of uh, serpents, if you will. Uh, in Enki, Ea, also known as Ea, he was one of the gods of the Anunnaki. Uh, you find in him a serpentine connection, even though he wasn't reptilian himself. And it was all evil, all the time, wasn't it? Well, he wasn't, what he did wasn't evil, and, and many times these reptilians you find weren't always evil. I believe it ties into the Sumerian culture because the Genesis story of the Garden of Eden is, if you look at it and compare it to the Sumerian story, you find they're almost identical with different, with little bits of changes. The chief god of the Sumerian pantheon, the Anunnaki, the Anuna, the, the chief god was Elil, or Enlil, he can be called as well, Elil. And one of the other gods was Enki. But Enki was the god who Elil called upon to create primeval man. And in this account, it says the Anuna were meeting, and Elil says, we are so tired of doing all our own work. We're digging our own canals, we're, we're mining our own resources, we're, we're uh, uh, tilling our own ground. Let us therefore create primeval man to do our work for us. Uh, they're tilling their ground, they're uh, mining their resources. Now, jump ahead. Over the next 1,500 to 2,000 years as mankind spreads down and out of the Fertile Crescent, down into the Canaanite region, Palestine, the Canaanites and the Hebrews pick up on these names. Elil becomes to the Hebrews El. El, they've shortened the name. El just simply in Hebrew means God, and Elil in the Bible can be found to be Elohim. Anki Ea becomes the same base word in, in Canaanite culture and in Hebrew culture. Ea becomes Yahweh, which is the base word for Jehovah. And so, first thing I noticed in the writing of the Book of Genesis is that whoever wrote that borrowed these names from a more ancient culture. What did they do? They created primeval man to till the ground and dig their dishes and ditches and all on. And you go to the, the Genesis story and you've got God, it's now a, instead of enslavement, it's a paradise, but God creates Adam and Eve and places them in the garden to do what? To till the ground and keep it for him. The similarity is so striking. Then in the, back to the Sumerian story, 
This is right off the cuneiform text. It says, Now there was one Atrahasis whose ear was open to his god Enki. And he would speak with his god, and his god would speak with him. That sounds so biblical. Uh, Atrahasis made his voice heard. He says, How long will the god make gods make us suffer? He asked. And it goes on to this great supplication that Atrahasis makes to Enki. What does Enki Ea do for Atrahasis? He hears his words. And he and his mighty uh, uh, god warriors come down. They deliver the forbidden knowledge of how to rebel against Elil and the gods, and they help them rebel. And Atrahasis and the humans win their freedom. And as a result, uh, uh, Elil uh, um, condemns Enki and his followers to the subterranean caverns of the earth forever. As a Where they may still be. People like David Icke think that uh, some of our leaders are reptilians. He bases his theories on the reptilians not only on, on reading Zechariah Sitchin, but also on having watched the 1970s miniseries V. And they want to have that dominion and maintain that dominion. And they're running throughout all the secret societies of the world from our ancient past to our present day. And they also have inbred into the uh, all the royal families of Europe, from time to time, you can see them shapeshift. From time to time, you can see, you'll see photographs of celebrities and famous uh, rulers and, and, and pol politicians uh, with, uh, oh, they've got a vertical iris, if you look really close. <laughs> they are out there and they live behind the scenes and that they want to dominate this planet. It's all about dominion it's all about dominance i mean look at uh, look at human history alone and look at the the genghis khan the, the hitlers the people like this that wanted domination uh they're immediately plugged into this category because they are fulfilling what it is the reptilians are out to accomplish with humanity where we say we believe the reptilians are here and on this planet and working uh but you can't just get on the phone and call one up do they shapeshift uh, according to David Icke, they do. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, there was somebody named uh, uh, Arizona Wilder. I don't know if you remember uh, remember her. Uh, she was somebody who came out and said that she was a a slave to the Illuminati. And uh, a few years back, and David Icke had interviewed her, and she even said uh, after the Icke interview that she saw David Icke shape shifting into huh. a reptilian. And that David Icke is a reptilian whose sole purpose on this planet is to is to misguide us, misguide to to instill disinformation. <laughs> Do they exist? Yes, I think there is something to this. There is some mythological aspect of them that has a kernel of a truth at the beginning and at the core. But it's finding out who they are. And how they got here. And how they got here. Was it nuts and bolts spaceships? Was it a interdimensional thing? Are reptilians the same type of beings that we look at as being uh, like the Nephilim? Uh, uh, there are demonic tie-ins, spiritual being tie-ins. The story of the Messiah in the Old Testament. He says to him... And you will bite his heel, but he shall return and, and crush your head. And there's no object of who the he is there. It, it's, it's, but rabbinic and Christian scholars will tell you that is the first messianic prophecy of how the Messiah would come and the, the serpent character would try to destroy him, but he would destroy him in turn. And uh, then he says to all of them in the garden, the, the man, the woman, and the serpent, he says, and there will be enmity or constant conflict between the seed of the serpent and the seed of the human. And that seed will fight with each other. It's because Cain was not of the pure human blood. He was of the blood of Nakosh and Eve, the serpent character. And the Messiah was ha had to be of pure human blood. So what's the serpent seed doctrine? What does that mean? Satan himself spawned a seed through Eve. The serpent seed says that there is a lineage of Satan, a lineage of Lucifer out there. And this is the stuff that starts to build into the grail mythologies even. Uh, when you get down to the dark ages, uh, after 300, 400 years after the time of Christ, 
You've got the Merovingian kings, which is uh, one of the big lines that's the Merovingian dynasty that claim they have both the blood of Christ and the blood of Lucifer flowing through their veins. And I think this is the way they controlled the masses by saying we are these powerful people, so don't do us wrong. And so she had one child, Merovic, who had both the seed of Satan and the seed of, of Jesus. Sounds like Rosemary's baby all over again, it doesn't it? It certainly does. But talk about how Jesus and Lucifer are actually either one in same, or they are brothers in this cast of gods, this the divine council or the Elohim. When I talk about Hitler in this book, and I say how he was really influenced by all of this, this whole Merovingian line of thought, this priory of science thought, this brotherhood of Lucifer and Jesus thought, all started to tie into the Lumerians, the Atlanteans, and the German revivalists. First science fiction novel in 1870s about uh, this subterranean uh, um, civilization that explorers stumble upon and they have the power of Vril as their power source. And Hitler even went looking for that stuff. But the, the Thule Society came out of some of these th theosophists. And Hitler took the Thule Society and, and morphed it into the National Socialist Workers' Party, the Nazi Party. But all these guys believed that they were empowered by the Atlanteans, the ghosts and the spirits of the Atlanteans, who they all predicate on being the descendants, uh, not predicate, they, they, they place them as the descendants of the line of Christ, the line of Satan. Uh, the reptilian factor, this is where that plays in. It's come from Satan, the snake, the serpent, and brought all the way up into this line and saying that, that the line of the reptilians working behind the scenes in human history, this is how it found its way into what Hitler did. That's the thing about Hitler, is that he was very heavily influenced by all of this reptilian factor that as it came to him through the, the Satanist, uh, if you will, influence on the bloodlines that made it into the Merovingian kings and eventually up into these people who founded the Thule Society, which is where he formed the Nazi party. Alexander's mother, Olympias, was to have had snakes around, reptilians, snakes around her all the time. Alexander the Great, if he's somebody who's conquering the world, the known world of his time, there would be an emphasis behind it by those who purport that reptilians are there to conquer the world and to operate uh, behind the scenes. Look to the American Revolution. You had the, uh, the don't tread on me flag with the rattlesnake. Um, this, the symbol of the snake is, is pervasive. It's everywhere. It's always been there. It's been there as a symbol of power, a symbol of something to be feared, a uh, symbol of strength. I wanted to tell uh, you guys that another movie that would help people is this, really the Super Mario Brothers with Dennis Hopper, about the reptilians coming over uh, to Earth at this certain time. That's kind of informative, too. You know, give them a little understanding. I never knew I could get an education from the Mario Brothers, but that... <laughs> no, really, it's, uh, it's an interesting film there. It's got some key points that are happening today. I believe they're here now. They're hidden. They, um, I do believe they had a great uh, input in Hitler burning all those books, which had knowledge that would have helped us discover more. I've read about the Thule, uh, you know, the Thule um, cult, and yeah, Hitler was still involved in that. And extremely, extremely, though, he was hosted. He had, they said the, the evil that emanated from him was, uh, you know, unbelievable. So whoever, you know, used him as a host, um, was from uh, an area that wanted to be hidden. It's still hidden right now, and yes, they are here.